Hello everyone, welcome to this special episode of Tekton Z and happy Africa DLC day. Uh, not sure if that's an uh, official holiday, but uh, still. Uh, today we're doing something which I've wanted to do for so long, which is getting some meerkats into the zoo. Uh, so let's get straight into it. So I've had no uh, early access or anything like that. Uh, I've been waiting for the Africa pack, same as everyone else. So I built this um, meerkat enclosure yesterday. Uh, in a new area of the zoo, the desert. Um, when I planned the zoo out, I had uh, six different areas planned, but I left space for nine so that we could put more areas in as and when I wanted to. Uh, so we're starting a little desert area today uh, for our meerkats. We will eventually have uh, fennec foxes and I think gems bok as well, because I'm a big fan of both of those, uh, especially fennec foxes i remember seeing those in london zoo when i was a kid in the nocturnal house uh, and they just i mean they're incredibly cute but they're also kind of weird um i think because they live in the dark uh, and you can't hear them sort of running around they're almost spooky and cute at the same time which is uh, quite a weird combo so they've always been a favorite of mine so i'm really looking forward to getting some of those into the zoo um but that'll be for a later episode uh, we will be going back to the forest area uh, in our normal episode this Saturday uh, to do the ring-tailed lemur habitat. Uh, you might see the big sort of wooden under construction thing behind this. Uh, I've actually already finished the lemur habitat, just need to edit the video. So I've covered that up so that you, uh, you don't get any spoilers. Uh, but anyway, onto the meerkats. Uh, so I'm trying to do a, um, a sort of tecton version of the classic meerkat enclosure that you tend to get in zoos. Uh, I've seen a couple of enclosures in the past uh, month or so. It's the Yorkshire Wildlife Park and Knowsley Safari Park uh, and it is typically like this, a low wall, um, lots of space, uh, sand, soil etc for them to run about in. Um, and I just put a bit of a tecton spin on it using the, the white plaster uh, that we always use in this zoo. Uh, and some glass that curves inwards to act as a barrier uh, to stop the little meerkats from escaping. Uh, while they are so cute in this game, <laughs> they are really, really cool. Um, definitely worth the, the long wait to get them into the zoo. Uh, what I thought would be uh, pretty cool for this enclosure would be to actually have the zoo's logo in the enclosure as something that the meerkats could climb on. Um, We've all seen the classic uh, sentry duty behavior that the that meerkats do where they find the highest point in the um, surrounding area and then climb up to the top of it and stand there on the hind legs watching out for eagles uh, and all the other things that there is absolutely no danger of them being eaten by in a British zoo, but um, they do it anyway. Uh, unfortunately, when I added the meerkats in, I discovered that they cannot climb in this game. Um, so I had to sort of jerry-rig a, a ramp up to the, the back of the T, which is where I wanted them to stand. Uh, and it does work. They do stand up there, which looks really cool. You can see that in the cinematics at the end. But yeah, it doesn't look as uh, quite as good as I would have liked it to. Uh, so I will be going back and, um, uh, and sort of fixing that in future when I have a bit more time. But I just really wanted to get this video out today. Uh, like I say, we will be back to our normal episode um, Saturday when we do the lemurs. So meerkats live in sort of semi-desert areas throughout Africa or mainly um, the southern part of Africa I think. Um, so looked at a lot of reference photos for that sort of environment. Um, lots of dead trees obviously with there being not much rain for them um, but it is semi-desert rather than desert so there is grass, uh, vegetation etc uh, just not a whole lot of it. So I've put an acacia uh, some dead trees, lots of terrain gradations for them. Uh, I'm just securing the letters into the floor so they look a bit more stable here. I think this is the kind of stuff you probably don't do when you first start playing the game. Uh, the structural stuff, which is actually really important to sit things into reality. So I always try and do this uh, now. I want quite a lot of soil in the game as well, which I hadn't expected, so I went back and added that in later. Uh, and I wasn't sure if they'd need shelter, I assumed they would, uh, but I waited until the new African pieces were out to build that so we could get some new uh, pieces in there. 
uh, this whole habitat is just a, a null barrier. There's no actual barriers anywhere. The, the plaster and the glass does the job. And then getting the um, keeper's gate into a, a circular structure is always fun. <laughs> And then lots of rocks as well to sort of bring it to life along with the plants. I buried a couple of trees into the floor there as well, uh, which looks nice. So it's more of a sort of scrubby, low-lying vegetation rather than trees. There's just the one actual tree in the enclosure, which is actually still slightly too much for the, uh, the meerkat's liking. But um, I think they're at sort of 90 plus percent uh, welfare now, which is cool. I'll probably again tweak that in a bit as well. But uh, yeah, doing a video in, in less than 24 hours is a, definitely a record for me. It normally takes me like three to five days to get one together, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I'm just hoping it doesn't look like I uh, <laughs> put it together that quickly. <laughs> just doing some work to try and fix the door there, make it look like it belongs. This all gets covered up with this shelter later anyway, uh, because uh, I thought the shelter looks best in the center and at the back of the um, habitat so I could probably got away with uh, spending less time on this to be honest. In regards to the other animals in the Africa pack like I said I'll definitely be getting fennec foxes into this area. What I'm also going to do is go back to London Zoo 1985 and, and bring most of the new animals into there because all of those enclosures are already built but they've currently got the wrong animals in them so um, meerkats, fennec foxes, uh, white rhino, um, they will all definitely be going in. Uh, African penguins as well, much closer to the Humboldt penguins that should be in the penguin pool rather than the king penguins I've got in there at the moment. So they'll be going in as well. So once those are all in there, I think I'll do a, um, a London Zoo 1985 tour uh, for the channel. Um, I know Pawsley's already done one, um, but this will be more of a sort of a historical tour, um, talking about the, the history of the zoo and, and the various enclosures that you can see there and, uh, uh, and what's in there now. Uh, also bringing in now the, the actual desert area itself, it'll be quite a small area, definitely smaller than the, the forest, um, but I wanted to tie everything in nicely rather than just lobbing some meerkats into the middle of the zoo and uh, hoping it looked okay. Uh, so uh, this whole area will be laid out and, um, and decorated as a, as a desert uh, right next to the forest that we already have. I'm ZSH Plays by the way, if you are enjoying this and you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, then you can see all the future episodes and you won't miss them. And please let me know in the comments what you think of this build and the Africa pack in general. I really love reading them. Uh, the name for this enclosure, Meerkat Manor, uh, stole <laughs> from, I think it was an old BBC nature documentary about uh, meerkats, obviously. <laughs> um, and again, I try and make it look a little bit logo-ish with the, some overlapping text, like the same as all the other enclosures to give a visual continuity to the zoo. I've decided to use a uh, mustard yellow rather than the orange that I've used elsewhere for this desert area. Uh, I'll be use green in the, the forest. I want a different colour for each uh, part of the zoo. I noticed yesterday as well that we've hit 50 subscribers on the channel so thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. It's uh, quite surprising for my weird little zoo that I'm building here so thank you very much and um, thank you for your lovely comments as well and now we're on to some rock work and just doing the uh, the designs for the exterior of the habitat to make this look more like a desert lots of desert trees as you'd expect rocks a few plants nothing too crazy otherwise it won't look like a desert and then um, this rock wall that I'm putting in to separate the forest from the desert so I want you to be able to sort of see into each part of the zoo uh, from other parts but not too well uh, so it's more like a, a glimpse than, uh, than the, the areas being joined together using two different colors of rocks to make it a bit more interesting and I've just seen as well that in the uh, new DLC we are finally getting off-grid mesh pieces which is very exciting <laughs> um, there are so many places especially in London Zoo 1985 where there are aviaries, so many aviaries in that zoo. I don't even know how many aviaries there are, um, but it is a lot. I mean, I built it and I can't remember how many they are, so that tells you how many uh, different aviaries there are in there. So being able to use off-grid mesh pieces is gonna make a huge difference. 
I'm really looking forward to getting a load of the aviaries made to look better than they do at the moment. Uh, most of them have been made at the moment with that um, sort of wooden waffle type piece, which isn't really that good a stand-in for, um, for an aviary, uh, but it's what I've had to use. It's the only thing that could uh, do it, either that or the um, modern glass pieces and just pretend that it doesn't have any glass in them, which is hardly ideal. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to updating that. And who knows, we might even get some Averys into this zoo as well. We'll have to see. And now the final bits of terrain painting, which is so important to really tie everything together. Just putting a little bit of grass in alongside all the sand and then making these signs look better as well. And then a few final plants to bring together the uh, different sides of the enclosure. You'll see as well in a minute the lighting on the entrance to the desert area of the zoo. I really love the lighting engine in this game, you can do so much with it. I've put a really soft orange glow on the title for the uh, entrance, which you can see there, sets it off really nicely. And then a few terrain gradations as well, just to make things a bit more interesting. Nothing should ever be completely flat. And then I wanted some really low-lying plants to go in front of the enclosure so it doesn't cover up the um, the text on the on the front of the enclosure the rest of this will obviously be done properly when the rest of the desert is put in but for now I've just dropped a few trees and paths in so my guests can get there uh, and so that the background isn't completely blank we need it to look half decent for the video don't we this is that um, sort of little ramp that I mentioned earlier to try and get the uh, the meerkats up onto the tee which uh, which they do but like I say, it's a bit, it's a bit janky looking at the moment. To be honest, um, I'll improve that later. And now, finally, on to the new building pieces, which I'm really excited about. There's a load of plaster pieces, which is uh, very good news for me in this zoo, seeing as that's what everything is built out of. Uh, so this is literally the first time I'm seeing them. I'm just throwing together a few uh, things uh, to see a bit, um, see if it sits together. It's probably not the um, not the best shelter I've ever built, uh, but it looks quite nice and it fits in nicely. Um, and that is the uh, the meerkats done. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll be back on Saturday with uh, the ring-tailed lemur habitat. Enjoy. <laughs>